In this video, I will provide you with a couple of different ways that you can structurally reinforce a floor beam that would be located in your second floor and sitting on top of a concrete foundation. I will be doing another one for a wood framed floor and I will attach a link to that somewhere in the video. So here we have a concrete foundation with footings going all the way around the perimeter and none in the center. So we will need to keep that in mind if we are going to add any type of load bearing support under the beam that would sit on top of the foundation. And in our first example, we will install a beam under the beam to provide a little more support. And since most of the time we're going to have a 12 inch wide footing, then we're probably not going to have a problem installing some type of a post base connector at the bottom. And we could always add additional connectors to connect the post to the wall framing, top plates, and to the two beams here to prevent it from moving. And you do not want your beams to be moving. So keep that in mind when you are doing any type of work like this. And in our next example, we will install a beam that will run perpendicular to the other beam. And this does not need to be located in the center. If you have some type of a concentrated load that is creating the problems or the reasons why your beam might be sagging, then I would suggest placing the beam underneath the concentrated load area. And for more information about concentrated loads, go to the website and check out some of the engineering videos. And we will be supporting this beam in the same way that we did in the previous example on this side, with the exception of adding some type of a framing anchor to connect the beam to the top plates. And of course, you could put those on both sides along with a strap. However, on the other side, we are going to use a different method to where we will sandwich the beam in between two wall framing studs so that we can place the post inside of the wall and then we will end up notching the top of the beam and even though something like this might not be approved by an engineer it might work for your repairs now keep in mind that the examples in this video might not work for your particular project that might require you to hire a structural engineer Next up, we are going to replace the wood beam with a metal I-beam. And you should also check to make sure that you're going to have enough headroom. And if I'm right, about 6 foot 8 is going to be the minimum. However, it might be 7 foot measuring from the floor to the bottom of the finished beam. So that will be something else you will need to consider. And this beam will be located in about the same spot as our other beam and providing about the same support. And on the other side, I went ahead and put in a wood post. I've seen this a lot. However, it's not something I've ever done before. And we could use some type of brackets to attach the beam to the wood along with some building hardware like some flat framing anchors to provide a nice secure connection between the wall framing and the new post. And another thing I need to point out is that the beams that run in this direction will also be supporting the floor joist in a situation like we have here. Another idea would be to add some type of a structural post. Now I need to point out that the structural post might require a concrete footing, especially if you are going to be hiring an engineer. However, I am not about to suggest that you cannot set this right on top of the concrete slab because I've seen it done plenty of times. So again, I will leave that up to you, whether you want to dig your own footing or whether you feel it's going to be fine sitting right on top of the concrete. And I would imagine this is going to be about the most common repair. And the only difference will be where you're going to put the post and whether or not you're going to install a footing or whether you're going to use more than one post. Or you might want to build a wall underneath the beam. And with something like this, even though an engineer is probably going to require some type of a footing, this method might allow the structural load from above to be transferred through a variety of different framing members that can be used to transfer the load more evenly throughout the entire concrete slab 
tab instead of concentrating it in one area like you would be with a post sitting directly on top of the slab with no footing underneath it. And of course you could always use a smaller wall or even a smaller wall. Or we can take it one step further and add even a smaller wall. And again, these walls might need to be located underneath any type of a concentrated load sitting on top of this beam, especially if the beam is already starting to fail and sag or deform in another way to where safety could be a concern for the structure. And for those of you who have basements, you've probably seen these before. And these are adjustable jack posts that can sit right on top of the concrete foundation or on top of a concrete footing that you might have installed. And they usually work by rotating some type of a threaded section of the post that will raise the other section of the post until it is tight enough at the top to provide a nice secure connection. And most of them have some type of plates like these that are located at the top and the bottom that can be used to attach the post with some type of a lag screw or bolt to the wood or metal framing. And one of the reasons why these are used more often is the fact that you will be able to raise, lower them, or relocate them if needed, or even reuse them on other projects. And I've also seen construction workers use more than one of them to provide additional structural support and in some cases, you might even be able to straighten the beam out. Now, that's probably wishful thinking. However, if you continue to apply enough pressure over a long enough period of time, you actually might be able to straighten the beam out. However, this might not mean that you'll ever be able to remove the supports. And that's where I will end this video. So hopefully by now you have enough information to consider using one of the methods suggested in this video to add a little more structural support to a beam in a floor directly above a concrete foundation.